uh, as the recruiting trail provided um, a, a wrinkle in the Arch Manning recruitment because uh, Eli Holstein, a four-star prospect from the class of 2023, one of the uh, eight, the eighth ranked quarterback in that 2023 class, he committed to Alabama. In addition to that quarterback room, but the we we cannot say Arch Manning's name enough. Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning, Arch Manning. Uh, people love the Arch Manning news, and so I wanted to just open this up as we you know, look at where Arch Manning, who's a player who has already been um, you know, tabbed as a generational talent, like some of the other generational talents that we've seen come through in recent years. Do you think that this means that Alabama is out of the Arch Manning sweepstakes? Who do you think now might be in the lead right there uh, as Manning continues to remain uncommitted in that 2023 class? I... I don't know that it means Alabama's out. Like, as far as my understanding of the situation, Arch Manning is down to three schools, and it's Georgia, Alabama, Texas. Now, that's as everything when it comes to recruiting is fluid. Things can change depending on what. But I, th I think those are the three places he has official visits set up. But when you look at the way quarterback recruiting goes, most schools, especially, you know, like the top schools that kind of have their picks of the litter, don't take multiple QBs like they've got their board and they take the one guy and they kind of have everybody hold off until they find out what the other guy's doing. So if Holstein's making his commitment to Alabama now, I do think that could be seen as an indicator of where Alabama feels it stands in the Arch Manning pursuit, or maybe Alabama's just decided it wants to go a different direction. I don't know. I would think at this point, though, I feel like it's going to be Georgia or Texas for Manning. And I'm leaning Texas. Mm. Mm. Um, this is fascinating. I think it's one of those, like, because in recruiting, if you're Bama and you've got Eli Holstein there and he's like, I want to commit. And they're like, they probably are still want Arch Manning, but they don't want to be stuck with nothing or a third option or a lesser option or a three-star quarterback. So like they can't, play the long game and just say, well, can you hold on a little bit? They have to take, like, if he wants to commit, they have to take him. I don't think it necessarily means it. Oh, it's over. And if you're Arch Manning, I, I think with his stature, with his name, I'd be like, I'm going out. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat whoever I need to beat. Like I would expect that's anybody's mentality coming out. But I do wonder if this does, if you're having a list of pros and cons, I think one of them would be there's a kid, four star, pretty good quarterback in my class at Alabama already. I would put that in the con uh, territory. Like, I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker, but I definitely think it would elevate some of the other schools to the forefront. I don't know. I, I have no idea what's going on with this recruitment process. I do know, you know, like from a standpoint of what I would do, like Danny Warfel and myself were coming out at the exact same time the same class uh we were being recruited by the same schools we talked probably once a month we just catch up hey what are you thinking and we kind of decided why would we go to the same place like that doesn't make any sense like why would we go and one of us is going to win a battle and the other one's going to be sitting on the bench we don't want to do that so we kind of decided to go to different schools i committed to florida state the next day he committed to florida and it was kind of done and i was looking at florida like i, was, I had offers from them too so, like, I wonder if that's a current mindset of Arch Manning that he's thinking, why would I go compete with somebody, maybe lose, and then I'm sitting on the bench? Why don't I just go somewhere where it's a little bit of a clearer path? I mean, you're going to have to compete wherever you go, but why go with somebody with, you know, that type of pedigree? Yeah, it's like, he's not Arch Manning. Like, Arch Manning is the number one player considered in the class. He's, like, you know, got, like, a perfect score on the composite as far as, like, his five-star. But Holstein is the number eight QB in the composite, and he's a very highly rated four-star. It's not like this is some, you know, schlub that Alabama ended up with. It's going to be a kid who's going to be good. And honestly, like, I, I have not seen Arch Manning in person. I've seen highlight tapes. The people who do this for a living, who evaluate high school talent that I talk to about him, all tell me that it's very real. He's a very good player. He's a very good prospect. But no matter how often I hear that, I'm not going to be convinced that the kid's last name isn't playing a part in his ranking as far as what people think. Like you look at him and you see who his you know uncles are and you see what his grandfather is and you see what they accomplished. And it's only 
it's it's natural to sit there and think, well, you know, that's what he's going to be become. That's you know, he's got that kind of lineage. He's going to be a great player like they all were. He's going to be a pro. So that's going to impact the way you view him just to begin with because you know his name. So I'm not convinced that there's like Manning and Holstein. There's really as large of a difference as far as their ability or who they could be. But I do from reading up on Holstein. The scouting report on him is that he's got a very high floor. Maybe he doesn't have the same ceiling as a lot of these guys because he doesn't have like tremendous arm strength as far as pushing the ball down the field. But you could also argue if you look at the situations, if the talent isn't that disparate between two prospects, who would you want to bet on? The guy who ends up at Alabama or a guy who ends up at Texas or Georgia? Because as we've seen, like with Georgia, like, one of the reasons I think that I, I, I would lean Texas if it's between those two at this point is we've seen Georgia. There's really not, they haven't, you know, Kirby's won a national title and he's done a lot of great things, but the one thing he hasn't done yet is develop a QB and have him, you know, go on to be an NFL player. Like Jake Fromm got drafted, but Jake Fromm is not, you know, tearing things apart in the NFL. Stetson Bennett might end up in the NFL. He might not. He had a really good season, but he's not really kind of the, you know, pro player kind of prototype. Justin Fields was there. Justin Fields left. Texas, at least with Sark, you get the idea that he has groomed QBs in his past. And so maybe that seems to be more of an attractive route. So that's why I think Arch Manning is there. But here's, I'm kind of rambling at this point. But here's another thing I want to bring up. What happened last week between Jimbo and Saban? Well, um, uh, a nice little back and forth, you know, just a, you you might call it a spat. Nick yeah. Nick seemed to be in a bad mood, right? Talking to his boosters about how we're not doing a good enough job in this NIL era of coming together, figuring out what it takes to get this done. We're slipping in recruiting. And then a week later, Eli Holstein commits to Alabama. And now we're wondering what that means for Alabama's pursuit of Arch Manning. This is all pure speculation, but yes. What if Nick got some news last week <laughs> from Arch Manning or like, you know, the people around Arch Manning that indicated that he wasn't going to come to Alabama and Nick was just kind of in his feels because maybe he thinks that whoever he ends up going to did a much better job on the NIL front and all that kind of stuff. Although I don't know if it really means as much with, with Arch Manning, considering his family. I don't think this is a situation where you really need to buy him because I think he's going to be okay. But I just wonder if maybe these things aren't connected somehow. Well, I so when you said Texas over Georgia, was that prediction or was that what you would do? Because that's the I think that's both. another okay, both. You would say that you'd go to Texas because uh of Georgia's history that you just mentioned, Steve Sarkeesian's own history. And I guess if you're looking at you know what they're going to be stepping into. Clearly, there is an effort right now at Texas that you know Quinn Ewers is going to pave the path for what these 100 rated quarterbacks can do. Because wasn't Quinn Ewers a 100? If, if not, like a nearly close, perfect yeah. score uh, in terms of the analysis of what he can be, and and the reports that we got from spring practice and some of the offseason workouts suggest that. He could be really, really good this season. So is that a, like, go to Texas, be able to jump right into this offense um, and avoid the Georgia pitfalls, I guess you could say, for some of these top-rated blue-chip quarterbacks? Or, uh, I mean, if you get Arch Manning, you build your offense around Arch Manning, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know if I would consider Georgia a pitfall as much as going, again, going back to the Saban Jimbo thing. When you read some of the articles, I think it was Feldman's at The Athletic, like part of Jimbo's rift with Saban was that while he was his offensive coordinator, you know, Nick didn't want Jimbo doing what he wanted to do on offense. It was my, about my defense. We're going to win with defense. The offense is just there not to screw it up. I kind of get the same sense that what Kirby's doing at Georgia isn't all that dissimilar to what Saban was doing at LSU at the time. And God knows it's working pretty well for him. So he's got no reason to change it at this point. So if you are a quarterback, a highly rated one who's got NFL aspirations, and that is your primary goal, I just think the former offensive coordinator who has produced and developed QBs in his history is more attractive than Georgia right now. Mm. I think there could be an attractive sell for Georgia if you're Kirby Smart saying, hey, you could be the Tua like when all of a sudden Bama's offense took off because mm -hmm. before that it was very conservative and he was winning that way just like Georgia has. But you could sell him on, you could be the guy. You could be the one that changes that narrative here at Georgia. We'll be, we are, 
That takes a lot of trust, though. I mean, I'd be like, hey, trust me, we're going to let you air it out. And what you watch every week is not that. Um, but you could sell them on, hey, we haven't had a quarterback like you. We've had quarterbacks with limitations, uh, Stetson Bennett fan club aside, like that you've got issues. Like we, we, we've, had, we've had to work with what we've got. If we have you, it will look totally different. I think that's what you got to sell them on if you're and- Georgia. You know, Holstein is, uh, as you mentioned, Tom, a, a very highly rated player. You know, the rest of the quarterbacks that are committed here, we got Nico going to Tennessee, Malachi Nelson going to USC, uh, Chris Vizina going to Clemson. I mean, these are all players that we have celebrated in terms of being some of the top quarterbacks in the class. And to your point about the Saban Jimbo thing, getting uh, the commitment from Holstein, who's also considering Texas A&M, probably uh, a nice little win to go and get there. And then I, I want to add this. So 24-7 Sports, uh, Director of Recruiting Steve Wiltfong, Bama Online Publisher Tim Watts, uh, they have both said that the commitment of Eli Holstein does not alter the Crimson Tide's pursuit of top-ranked signal caller Arch Manning. He's got an official visit planned to Tuscaloosa next month. If Alabama goes in and finds a way to get Eli Holstein and Arch Manning, then it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. But whatever you did to be able to motivate anybody who needed to be motivated, then it was 100% worth it. Here's what what I do think is interesting about Arch Manning's future. We haven't heard any. I mean, have you guys heard any idea of where he's leaning? There are zero crystal ball projections. And so even like that idea that Nick might have heard something that gives him the that gives him a notion of where Manning may or may not be leaning, whether Alabama is or is not in the mix there. I think that there is um, a real. The added fascination is that no one seems to even have a lean on where Manning might end up. Yeah, our, I mean, part of the benefit of being a Manning and having that kind of just knowledge of how it works and just the security and comfort from that name, like he holds all the cards. Like he knows that these schools are all waiting on him or there's nothing. If he chooses them, he knows they're all good. They're not like, if he says, I want to go to Alabama, like he calls Saban and says, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm committing. It's not like Nick's going to be like, no, sorry, we don't have a spot. Like anywhere he wants to go is going to have a spot for him. So he doesn't have to be like, you know, a lot of kids are talking to the reporters and they're giving them hints. They're saying, oh, I'm leaning here. Or like people close to them, coaches, high school coaches, all that kind of stuff are saying, well, you know, giving them hints, leaning where he's going, picking up information that way. Manning doesn't have any of that. Like he doesn't have to. Like he doesn't. The only people that know really are him and his family. And they're not talking to anybody because they don't have to talk to anybody. So, yeah, it's hard to get a crystal ball read when nobody's telling you anything. (laughs) Yeah, Holstein, uh, a decommit, uh, I believe, from uh, Texas A&M. From Texas A&M. 